All right, so let's take a look at spinal nerves. But before we get into spinal nerves, let's look at a, uh, a nerve structure. So a nerve is a cord-like uh, cord bundle of nerve fibers held together by layers of connective tissue. Now, a nerve fiber and an axon are the same thing. So here is a, a neuron, uh, I'm sorry, a nerve, all right? And so what we have is we have connective tissue around that entire nerve, and that is known as the epineurium. So this is the outermost layer of connective tissue surrounding a nerve. And what we've done to those nerve fibers is we've put them into groups, and each group is known as a fascicle. So each one of these is a fascicle, also known as a fasciculus. So this is a group of, neuro, uh, uh, this is a group of nerve fibers within a nerve, is a fascicle. And of course, we have connective tissue around each fascicle, and that is known as a perineurium. So this is connective tissue that encloses a fascicle, all right? And then we also have connective tissue around each individual nerve fiber or axon, and that is known as endoneurium. So this is connective tissue that surrounds an individual nerve fiber. And so we see that there is trying to show that endoneurium. So we look at types of nerves. We have a sensory nerve. This is a nerve that conducts impulses to the central nervous system. We also have motor nerves. These are nerves that conduct impulses to effectors, so from out of the central nervous system to effectors. And then we have mixed nerves, and these are nerves that include both sensory and motor fibers. So spinal nerves are nerves that arise from the spinal cord. And we have 31 pairs of these, and each pair, so 31 pairs, once again, we talked about segments earlier. So this is showing one segment of our spinal cord where we have a pair of spinal nerves uh, coming out of it. And so each nerve has two branches. So these are the two branches that we're talking about. So one of these branches is the dorsal branch, that's this one here. So the dorsal root uh, conducts impulses from the peripheral nervous system to the spinal cord. So information is going this way. So that's sensory information going in that direction. And here, uh, those sensory neurons have their uh, uh, cell bodies within the dorsal root ganglia. So um, within the ganglia. Next is the ventral root. There's the ventral root there. Motor impulses are going in the opposite direction here. All right, so this conducts impulses from the spinal cord to the peripheral nerve system. So impulses, motor impulses are going in the opposite direction. Next are plexuses. So a plexus is a network of interlaced uh, nerves, which I mentioned earlier. So these are a plexus here. So we have a cervical plexus, which is what we see here up in the neck. And coming out of that one is a pretty important nerve and that's called the phrenic nerve. And that conducts an impulse to our diaphragm to contract. So allows us to breathe. Next is a brachial plexus, what we see here. So uh, that goes out to the arms. And then we have a lumbar plexus, and then we also have a sacral plexus. So uh, some nerves coming out of those as well. Another thing that we have with, those sens uh, with our sensory neurons are our dermatomes. These are specific areas of the skin in which a spinal nerve receives sensory input. So, you know, spinal nerve receives input in there, in there, and so on. These do overlap. Now, if you've heard of somebody getting uh, shingles, shingles is chicken pox that comes out later in life. And what happens there is the uh, chicken pox um, virus attaches its DNA onto our sensory neuron DNA. And so when it comes out, it comes out where that sensory nerve cell innervates. And so you'll see people with shingles getting them in these strips. All right, let's look at uh, regeneration of a nerve fiber. Okay, so this is when uh, we damage a nerve, uh, an axon, and we're going to repair it. Now, if the damage occurs too close to the cell body, well, the nerve cell just dies. All right, so what happens if that doesn't occur? So what's going to happen here is when we have a damage here, uh, that uh, damage area is sealed off, so we don't have the spread of damage going back to the cell body. And so the uh, axon and the myelin sheath distal to the injury begin to disintegrate, so due to lack of nutrients getting there. All right, so, you know, it starts to die off here. This continues distally from the injury site, and it completely fragments the axon, and the entire axon is degraded by macrophages in about a week. All right? What happens here is the neurolemma and the endoneurium remain intact. So the neurolemma is the outermost layer of a Schwann cell. 
all right? And so surviving Schwann cells are gonna proliferate to that area and migrate to that injury site. And then those Schwann cells are gonna release, uh, re release growth factors that encourage axonal growth. So stimulating the axon to grow there. Uh, and they also form what is known as a regeneration tube, which you can see there. Uh, and that's gonna guide the axonal growth to its original contact. So getting back to its original contact. All right, if the damage area is pretty large, there's less chance for regrowth. Uh, and you may need to retrain your nervous system to respond uh, you know, appropriately. So here on this example, they show the muscle atrophies where that damage axon went. So you have to uh, you know, retrain that muscle to react. Uh, if it's a sensory neuron, you know, you're gonna lose sensation for a little while, but hopefully as these reattach, you gain that sensory information back again.